Welcome back to Moose and the Loose, your source of uncorrupt media. My name's David. Today, we're talking about Danielle Smith rolling out new regulations in Alberta regarding ages of transitioning male to female, female to male, as well as a few other things. And the reaction of some liberals, which is quite... Uh... <laughs> animated and shocking. The Alberta government has unveiled sweeping new rules for transgender youth in the province. Danielle Smith making the announcement last night on social media. Making permanent and irreversible decisions regarding one's biological sex while still a youth can severely limit that child's choices in the future. Prematurely encouraging or enabling children to alter their very biology or natural growth, no matter how well-intentioned and sincere, poses a risk to that child's future that I, as Premier, am not comfortable with permitting in our province. Under the proposed measures, puberty blockers and gender-affirming surgery will be prohibited for children 15 years of age and younger. The province will also ban children under 17 from having top and bottom surgery, and students aged 15 years and younger will require parental permission before they can use their preferred names or pronouns at school. The policy also will not allow transgender women to compete in women's only sports leagues. The move is already drawing criticism from politicians in Ottawa. So 18 or older to be able to do surgeries, 16 or older to use the, the hormones, and putting an end to the nonsense, the absolute nonsense that is a man who transitions to a woman and then competes in women's sports and dominates. That is the most ridiculous thing ever. A lot of reactions in the House of Commons as well as in the, uh, in the hallways of Parliament. The decision that was made by Alberta places kids at risk. Uh, we know that uh, one, of the, one of the number one reasons why kids take their life uh, is, uh, is problems around sexual identity uh, and uh, that the ability to be who you are, you know, uh, is so vitally important. What, what is your take on that? Do you think that this is the right decision? 16 and older for hormones, 18 and older for bottom and top surgeries? Let me know in the comments down below. I think this is a little bit hypocritical for what's about to be said up, up next here. In Ottawa, legislation was introduced today to delay expanding assistance in dying to people with mental illness until March of 2027. The Liberal government says it faced pressure from provincial and territorial health ministers to pause the changes until the health care system is ready to implement them. What we are saying to Canadians is that because the, of the significance of the decision, because of the, uh, the nature of the consequences of this kind of policy, we have to ensure that we get it right and we are determined to do just that and putting a pause on it for the next three years will ensure the system readiness, which is what uh, the healthcare system has indicated is required and what Canadians are asking. So they have no problems with kids, children transitioning, the reason being because they may take their own existence. But an everyday Canadian who is suffering from mental health, they were putting in a program so people could take advantage of that and end their existence. Do you see the hypocrisy here? This is absolutely ridiculous. Now, obviously, a bunch of provinces push back on this, and then that's why they put a three-year delay on it. This is, their delay is basically them just backing out of a really bad, stupid program. And I can say, honestly, I've suffered from mental health for many, many years, many different times, different, different years, especially after my business was destroyed here recently. Uh, I just couldn't believe sometimes, like some people I got messages from were terrible. They were mean messages. And it, it really, those kind of situations when you go through hell, you learn who your real friends are and who, who doesn't care. And it turned out most people didn't care. But I had a couple people really reach out and help me through that kind of situation. But in that time of darkness, if there was an easy button, if there was a simply go up to the hospital, and, hey, just put the thing in my arm and then I can go to sleep forever. There was that thought there that, yeah, that's an that's a easy, easy way out. But that's not the right way out. That's That's a terrible, after being on the opposite side of it now where I'm, I'm doing much better, and I'm, I've pushed through that. That is the wrong way to do that. That is, not, that is not right. There needs to be services in place. I went and talked to a nurse and I told her everything that had been going on, what led up to, I won't put you, you, you through all that, this stuff, but I went through a divorce. I had a, a physically uh, abusive ex and uh, built this business from scratch. And then I, I got my identity hacked and it took months to get that back. And then I had my business hacked and deleted and wiped out ex completely. And it just like, it got to a point where like, well, why, why even bother? Why, why try in life? And so I just want to say to anyone out there who is suffering, uh, who's going through a hard time, just remember one 
one phrase and remember it well. If you're going through hell, keep going. Tattoo that on your arm, put it on a sticky note on your on your fridge, on your on your computer screen. If you're going through hell, keep going. Uh, it may not seem like it. I never I did not think it was possible to get through the hell I was going through. I saw no possible way. The key is just to lock in on the tiniest wins in life. Often Jordan Peterson says is make your bed. And what he's basically saying is, yes, actually make your bed. Because if you get a win at the beginning of your day, it's like, oh, I achieved something. I made my bed and come back to my bedroom at the end of the night. And I have this nice bed waiting for me that's nice and clean and crisp and ready for me. It's a win. That's what he's basically saying. Whether it's get up in the morning, go for a run, have a green smoothie, whatever checks off something on your list that makes you feel achieved and get... Uh, into a better mental state. That is what you need to do when you're at the bottom. When you're at the very bottom, rock bottom of the pit, it doesn't seem like you can get out. There's no rope, there's no ladder that will get you out of there, but there is, and it's a trap door, and you don't know this. There's trap doors down there, and you just need to keep going, and eventually one of those trap doors pops open and you get out of there. The only thing to watch out for is once you neurologically build a pathway down to that deep, dark pit, it's easier to go back there. So it's important to keep on the habit so you stay out of there. The first time down there is much harder than, than going back multiple times. So uh, that's why it's disgraceful. These liberals are absolutely disgraceful for even thinking about having this made program where you can, you can just, oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm, I, my wife cheated on me. I don't want to, I can't do this anymore. Like that, that person needs a friend. They, they, need, they need a month off their job. They need a friend. They need to go on a hunting trip. They need to go backpacking. They need to go fishing. They need to clear their head. They don't need an injection. It's disgusting what these liberals, it's just, it's disgusting. Under the proposed legislation, another parliamentary review in two years time will reassess the healthcare system's readiness. Today, we're witnessing the horrific outcome of pandering policies that exist in New Brunswick, Saskatchewan, and it's gone even further in Alberta. We see the Tucker Carlson inviting Daniel Smith starting to pander to the far right and targeting directly the lives of trans people. Worse yet, these are policies that directly attack children. We know there's a direct causation between the identities of young people in Canada, the medical consensus that's been around uh, towards their access towards good medical gender-affirming care, and the outcome of not having those services equals death. Children are facing a pandemic in our country, a hidden one of not supporting their mental health. And what that outcomes are, are tragic. That is why it's so important now we take a stand in ensuring that we end these kinds of policies that punch down when we need to be punching up. As an Albertan, as a, as a parent, I am absolutely horrified by this attack on, on children in our province. The attack, attack on trans kids, those who are amongst the most vulnerable individuals in our community, is, is cynical, it's um, divisive, it's a, a cheap political move that is not only illegal, but will also deeply harm children. I have no doubt in my mind that the harm caused to children in our province, which will include things like homelessness, like suicide, is going to be directly related to the, the Premier's attack on children. So to wait till at least 18 before you make any major surgeries, multiple surgeries, seems logical to me. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? When I was growing up, you know, the hormones are all crazy when I was, when I was 8, 9, 10, 11. I don't think a, a kid really knows what's fully going on at that point. They don't even know who they are. They don't know what to feel, what this and that. Things are changing. Every conservative member of parliament in this house needs to vocally stand up and just declare unequivocally that they do not support this kind of attack on, on our, our queer and trans community. Why would you guys bring in a MAID program to, to have our own citizens end themselves after the suffering you have caused? Am I, am I wrong here? You guys have caused ungodly suffering and then you're offering a way for us to, to end it. This is disgusting. Disgusting people running our country. Stand for what is right. And one other thing to note, so that whole LGBTQ plus whatever, the big acronym, LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, lesbian, gay, bisexual, bisexual, as in two sexes, bisexual. It's just weird in that acronym that there's a 
bisexual, but then the acronym thus fully supports people being gender fluid and whatever. Like you can be one gender one day and then you're Ziki tomorrow. And doesn't that contradict? You can't have bisexual and be gender fluid. I, I can't even, I personally think there's two sexes. There's male and there's female. That's what the Neanderthals have shown us. And every other human who's ever been born on this planet has shown us. I don't think you can be a Ziki one day and a Taziki the next day. That's all I got to say on that. Finally, we've got Stephen Gilbo, a.k.a. the Mauve Garden Gnome, fresh out of 1971. I really think you should be talking to my colleague, Minister Ian, about this. She's much more knowledgeable. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a father of four. And, I, and I, you know, I do think that families come in all shapes and form. And, and I think what we're seeing in Alberta has nothing to do with parents' rights, has everything to do with scoring cheap political points. Like, there's no bill being introduced. It's a video on social media. One week after Tucker Carlson comes and spews his MAGA vomit on, <laughs> on Canada, uh, on, on, trans, uh, on, on, on LG, uh, LGBTQ and transgender kids, like, we should rise above this in Canada. But, but, but Minister Ian would be in a better position to answer your questions. <laughs> Mago vomit. Come on, man. <laughs> what a guy. This, this guy just running our country into the ground. He doesn't like that, you know, Daniel Smith called him out, just directly called him out. On the topic of Alberta, has there been any exchange between your office and, and uh, Daniel Smith's office regarding the comments uh, that she made about cross crosshairs? Cross there has not been any exchange no <laughs> no exchanges on the crosshairs <laughs> oh god this is what you can expect from this guy thank you on uh, alberta and the uh, gender uh, changes no i think it's extremely dis disappointing i mean every parent is parents who are concerned for their um uh, for their children but as we also know and as a police officer there are some children that are vulnerable who don't have a safe environment to be able to uh, to communicate. Um, so I'm hoping that the uh, Alberta government will take a look at that. Thank you. I'm pretty sure Daniel Smith specifically mentioned that in her, if you listen to the full long uh, press conference, she said if there's certain, there'll be exceptions for certain situations where uh, a kid doesn't get the permission of their parents and doesn't have the support of them and is like in a, a bad situation at home or whatever. So it's, it's, it's like everything she said was pretty logical. It's not like these, these liberals just twist everything. That's for sure. Uh, and it's uh, part of a wave that we see across the country that's even more troubling. I think, I think clearly parents um, want to know what their kids are up to. Uh, I, think, I think that has... That's how you... <laughs> what their kids are up to? When I was a kid, we rode our bikes up a big dirt mound, up and down, up and down. That's what we were up to. That's not really the right language to use for having your body permanently changed dramatically has to be respected um, but there's this there's there's there really is a, a human rights issue here um, that that shouldn't be dismissed and nor should there be uh, you know extraordinary measures taken to for that to happen so it's uh, it's concerning because it's popular but it's it's awful uh, that, that would be my thought <laughs> Thank you take so care much. You know, you know what? I'm not. I think uh, we got to get this one right. This is uh, it's a, a very um, serious topic with many people. I think I think we we all need to make sure that whatever we decide, that we do it right, and we involve as many professionals as possible. So I think, uh, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think time will tell, but I think it, it's, it's time worth waiting for. Thank you. We've got to get it right. That's, that's what they all, all of them, when they're asked that question, that's all what they say. we got to get it right. These guys are disgusting. Why is that even a consideration for a program in this country? The thing you need to get right is to go to a mental health specialist. That's what I did. I went to a nurse and talked to her. I felt really bad. I even told her beforehand, I said, I'm about to dump a bunch of stuff on you. Are you prepared to handle what's about to come out of my mouth? Because that's not pleasant. And she says, yes, I have training for that. I'm like, are you sure? And afterwards, she's like, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> so it's that's what you need is someone who's who's a, a real hero in our in our country who can 
can handle the atrocities people go through. That is their job. They have special training for it and they offer you supports, not here's a, here's a, a poker and now you're, you're gone. Well, there you have it. Uh, liberals are pissed about Daniel Smith uh, wanting parents to make the decisions about their children getting uh, gender reassigning surgeries or whatever it's called. Uh, let me know what your thoughts in the comments down below. I don't have a lot of uh, input on that whole topic. I do have on the lot on the mental health ones and I really... Um, I am not a fan of the liberals because they are terrible people. Either way, I'll keep you guys informed. Be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, turn on the post notifications there, the notification bell, so you actually get the notifications when the videos come out. Stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.